Hey, what's up everyone? Today I'm going to be showing you how to take a photo from this to this. Let's get into it. So for today, I'm going to show you how I edit my fitness photos. So first, we're just going to start in Lightroom. Where I'm going to show you the preset that I added and then also just explain a couple of things. And then we're going to head into Photoshop for the final retouches. So without any further ado, let's get into the edit. Okay, so before we get into the retouch in Photoshop, I just want to show you a quick before and after. This is just after the Lightroom edit. Um, I am working on some presets that are going to become available later this year. So stick around for that if you are interested. There's going to be on sale and for free. So a trick that I can give you is to use the paintbrush tool. So you brush over the subject there, you can see what it is. And then the settings there on the side. Um, just to increase the, the clarity, the exposure for a bit. And then just to um, enhance the, uh, the picture. So there I'm just going to say edit in Photoshop. So what are we going to do today is we're going to do some frequency separation. So you can see I'm just duplicating the layer. So it's Control J, Control J. And then the first layer I'm going to rename to low frequency and the top one to high frequency. The idea of frequency separation is to edit the textures and the colors separately. The low frequency is the colors. So there you can see I'm going to filter, blur, Gaussian blur. And then every photo is different. So for this one, five is about enough. So it's just enough where the colors start to smudge a bit. You can see I'm just inspecting, just saying okay. And then for the high frequency, we're gonna use image, apply image. And then there, the layer we're gonna select is low. We're gonna invert it. And the blending mode we want is add. So here you can just see, I'm just going through the, uh, the modes to show you that it looks really bad. So we're just gonna go to the add scale to opacity 100% offset zero and then okay that blending mode is going to be get changed to linear light so the idea of frequency separation is to edit the colors and the texture separately so a trick to that i use is i turn off the textures you can see i just turn off the high so i can just see that i'm going to the patch tool and just uh, edit all the um, imperfections that are very prominent so there you can see i'm just cleaning up the walls just to even out the tones in the wall to take away the distractions then i'm going in on the skin and just taking just little bits and then just moving it to a piece just very close by so everyone has very good skin so this is not really that that a lot of this is really not necessary so you can see that i moved a little mole there which is not something that i usually do it's just for purposes of this video um natural uh imperfections in the skin like moles beauty spots is something that i don't generally edit out um, it's something that is unique to a person and um, yeah you can see i'm just uh, trying to remove a little dark spot underneath the eye um, this is by a combination of the patch tool and the healing brush tool just to even out that just to um, take out some dark spots which the lights emphasized so you can see i turn on the texture again I'm just flipping between it just to see what uh, I missed, if I missed something. Just something about this edit. It took me almost 35 minutes for one of these for this edit. So that's why I just decided to um, speed it up and just talk like this. So you guys, if you if you like this, then uh, this form of commentary, then please leave a comment down below. And then if you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer them. You can see I'm on a mixture of the low and the high frequency to just even out the necklines there. Everyone has them, it's just to even it out a bit more. So this is still the color, then we're going on to the texture. So usually if you don't get everything sorted with the color on the low frequency, you can switch over to the high frequency and that will be done. You can see it's turning off, you can see the difference that it made. I'm just scanning over if I missed something. Then I'm going to add a curves layer. So this is going to be for the dodging and burning. So raising the highlights, inverting the mask, and again, another curves layer, and then darkening the shadows. Again, inverting the mask. So the idea of dodging and burning is just to enhance the features. There's nothing uh, extremely difficult so my, my approach to dodging and burning is subtlety is key you can see my flow is on three percent 
and then now I'm just going to go over making the highlights lighter and the darkness darker. This is just giving it more of a 3D feel and just adding some contrast. You can do this with different layers. I know people use color dodge or they even use the dodge tool. Um, but for this specific one, I don't know why it's on the normal, the blending mode. Usually for the dodge, I would use screen mode and for the burn, I would use multiply. You can see I'm just starting to paint in the dark pieces. You can see this is where it's going to pop. It's very subtle. Later, if you're done, if it feels too much, then you can just lower the opacity. So you can see I'm just flipping between, just seeing if I like everything, if I missed the spot. Looking at it for a general um, point of view, usually I will small, uh, even even I will. I will shrink the photo down even more. You can see I don't like that piece what I did on the cheek. So I'm just scanning the different parts of the image and then the, the part on the cheek is a bit too bright. So I'm gonna go in a minute, I'm gonna go in with the burn tool again. Or just take the dodge tool and then just invert the brush to the black again and then just darken that down again and take out where I brightened it where I don't want it. Some people use blend F for this and then use this dodge and burn technique over it. Um, there's no right or wrong way. This is just how I do it. So next we are going to add a little bit of a vignette. So again, mask, taking it to a multiply. I'm going to shrink it down and then just soften the brush up a lot, make it bigger. So it's just on that soft edge. You can just see darkening that edges around a bit. It's not that prominent here, but if you flip it on and off, you can see it's a very subtle change, but it really helps make the subject pop. Now, this is another layer where we use the high pass filter. With this, is less is more, so just a, a number of two. I'm gonna go in another range mask and invert it, then just go and sharpen the features like the eyes, the nose, the mouth, just the pieces that you want to see. I'm just, you can see all the hard edges going around the outlines of the, uh, the image just to make it pop and make it sharp. Now I'm gonna enlarge in the brush, drop the flow down quite drastically, and you just make one general pass over it just to sharpen the features a bit. Lastly, I want to take out that shelf on the left, so I'm just gonna make it in Control, Shift, Alt, E, and then now I'm gonna use the con Edit Content to Wave Fill, and then that you can see on the right is what it's gonna be. Now that left quite a hard shadow. So what I want to do is I want to blend it in with the shadow as it's softer to the right side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just do control shift alt E again. Then to make that layer blur, Gaussian blur. But for this one, I'm going to um, increase it quite drastically just to make it a soft edge. Now I'm going to take another range mask or a layer mask and then just take the brush with a low, fill, for, with a low flow and just, just paint over it again. You can see increasing the flow uh, incrementally just to match the shadow. So the, side. the reason I didn't take out the shadow completely is because that's what I wanted. Uh, I feel it creates a nice piece of contrast. So there you can see is the before and after. Well, there you have it, everyone. So before we go, I'd just like to point out that this was just an image to show you the technique. It was not the final image, hence the, the wrong blending mode option. Usually I would use the screen option for the dodge and then the multiply um, blending mode for the burn. So just bear that in mind. And then also here's actually the final image that I was actually pleased with and all the correct blending modes were used. So this is just to show you what you can achieve with that. So very minimalistic, not too over the top. Um, I think with fitness photography in a lot of sense, that is usually um, the route to go. Then finally, let me know in the comments down below what you think about this format of the video. Um, if you liked it, I found that the old way, the other editing videos that I did, it ended up being quite long and very tedious to edit and very boring. So let me know if you prefer that for more in detail or if you prefer this commentary over the actual editing um, and if you feel you actually got something from it. Be sure to leave a like, subscribe, uh, all that good stuff. 
um, I would really appreciate it. And then you can head now over to my Instagram. Uh, it's at Kuni Ackerman underscore photography. You can see all the content I'm, I work on there. Then you can see all the photos from the shoot. Um, I would really appreciate that. And then see you guys in the next one. Cheers.